My coverage of CES 2025 is brought to you by Asus, Gigabyte, Kyoxia, GLI, and LG. Check out their latest offerings with the links in the description. I'm at the Gigabyte booth now where they have GPUs. Oh, they have graphics cards for days. Unfortunately, they're completely swarmed right now by a mob of people. So we will circle back to that in just a few minutes here, but let's go ahead and talk about something no one is surrounding, which is AI. AI, AI computers, you know what, they, they have a place. These are Gigabyte's AI top systems using their AI top utility, which is specifically for the development of artificial intelligence applications. So right now we actually have two systems that are built specifically to process and handle large language models. And these two systems are actually working in unison uh, at the same time to work on a single LLM project. These are designed so that AI developers can work on their AI models locally instead of on the cloud. That way it just keeps it safe. You don't want that floating around. If you're trying to build an entire AI-based company, uh, you don't want that information floating on the internet. So this is all locally based. Let's see if I can get a focus on this graphics card here. There we go, Radeon Pro W7900 dual slot. So a W7900, this is a Radeon card, but it's specifically for AI processing rather than gaming performance. But the CPU is a bit more familiar. It's the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K which isn't really a great gaming CPU, so uh, hopefully it does better with AI. Blackwell GPU laptops. Blackwell GPU laptops. Here is the Master 18, uh, the latest Intel HX CPU. It doesn't exactly say which 50 series GPUs will be available for this particular model, but it does say this one has a 5080 in it, as we can see. 5080 laptop GPU, by the way, not a full fat uh, desktop version, but 18.3 inch screen, 2560 by 1600 display, Intel Ultra 9 285HX, 32 gigs DDR5 memory, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Matte screen on that one, a super glossy screen on this guy. This is the Aorus Master 16 BZH. I don't know what the BZH stands for, but we've got an RTX 5090 in this particular unit. A 16 inch screen, 2560 by 1600, just as genuine Intel CPU. I don't know what that means, um, but uh, 16 gigs of DDR5 memory, one terabyte storage, and of course all the DLSS4 features that make a 5070 as fast as a 4090. <laughs> <laughs> Performance aside, I do particularly like the LED strip at the bottom of these laptops. This one's all fancy and RGB and stuff. I'm sure this one's RGB too. Motherboards. Let's take a look at the motherboards right before we go over to that. Uh, this is a B850 Gaming X Wi-Fi 6E. This is AMD's big announcement. Everyone's like, oh, 9000 series. They're going to talk about it. They barely mentioned it. Uh, they just said, we have a new GPU and it's coming soon. But what they did talk more about was the B850 platform, a more budget-friendly solution to X870 and X870E, which a lot of people were like, bro, motherboards are so expensive right now. Bring the prices down. Down, and that's what B850 aims to do while retaining 80 to 90% of all the features that are plenty for most users. So here we have the, the Gaming X Wi-Fi 6E, B850, AM5 socket, of course, four dim slots, a uh, very nice clean aesthetic with some, some kind of fake trace lines, nice I.O. on the back. You get USB-C, 10 gig port, display port, HDMI, a PS2 port. When was the last time you saw one of those on a modern board? Audio jacks and Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, connector there, which is um, completely toolless. I think it's just like push push pin type style. You don't have to actually screw them on, which is nice. But check this out, B850 Whiteout. That's not what they're called. It's called the, the B850 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 ICE, but it is completely whited out. You see a lot of whiteboards, rarely ever do they commit this hard. I mean, the dim slots are white. The power connectors are white. Even like the USB 2 headers and everything, they're all white, apart from the, the actual silver socket, right? And, uh, and maybe some of the componentry itself, like these capacitors, it's completely white, which uh, I gotta admire the dedication there. And then check this out, a whiteout mini ITX board. This is on the X870 platform. This is X870i Aorus Pro Ice. This is great because there are a lot more small form factor cases out there that have a tempered glass side panel or that you can easily see into uh, to admire all the components inside. So having a white aesthetic in there is gonna be nice for those who wanna do a completely iced out build. Okay, let's talk about this before people come back. This is the Aorus Radeon RX 9070 XT Elite. Now there isn't a whole lot that AMD, or rather Gigabyte can say about these GPUs for now, because I mean, hell, AMD barely said anything about them other than that they exist. Uh, so really what we can do is just appreciate what's coming and know that these board partner cards are underway. We have a triple eight pin PCIe 
connection system with a massive heat sink. This card is extremely heavy. That heat sink is probably two inches thick. Bananas. Triple fan design, no openings on the side, but we do have a subtle pass-through design, a bit of ventilation on this side of the back plate where some of the air can breathe through. Not as open as most of the cards we've seen on the 5000 series, however. So a slight difference there. This is a three slot card. I would say two and a half to three slot. But then we have the 9070 Gaming OC, which is much more digestible for a smaller case. Two and a half slot from the looks of it. And for video outs, we have two HDMI and two DisplayPort. This 9070 has dual eight pin PCI Express connections. And here's a backside with a more generous cutout for flow through, pass through of that heat sink. OLED monitors, OLED monitors. Quick look at the QD OLED displays that they have here, two of which are particularly new and interesting. This is a 20, I think, I think it's a 27 inch, looks like a 27 inch OLED display. DCI-P3, 99%, uh, extremely good color accuracy, but it's 500 hertz. It's 500 hertz, you can see this epic demo that I'm giving you guys. Look at that, bunny hopping at 500 hertz. Absolutely unprecedented, extremely fast. Does anyone need 500 hertz? Let me know in the comments if, uh, if you're feeling like your 120 or 240 hertz display is feeling sluggish already and you feel the need to upgrade to a 500 hertz panel, is that where we're at right now? Obviously we can do it. I think we're just doing this because we can. We have this new wave of graphics cards that's able to now push 500 FPS in esports titles like CS2, Valorant, and that sort of thing. So um, whether or not we need 500 Hertz doesn't change the fact that it's much easier to drive frame rates at that level nowadays. And then we have this OLED panel, which is 4K, 240 Hertz, 0 0.03 milliseconds, gray to gray response time. An absolutely gorgeous unit that uh, we have a video demo here. So you see this guy planting a bomb. He's gonna plant a bomby bomb. Look at the top right corner. Top right corner of the screen. Second he plants the bomb, a timer comes on. He's got AI software built in. So you have a, a nice read, a very easy read on how much time you have left before the bomb detonates and a number of other nifty features. I think one they, they said was uh, if you get flash banged that the lighting will actually dynamically adjust so that you can see through the fog, or, or not the fog, but the flash of, of, of the bang, uh, which is uh, cheating. That is known as cheating. Yeah, they, they, they said it was to give it a competitive edge, but we all know what it really is. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. RTX 5000 series graphics cards. Look at all of these bad boys. There's a lot of them. We're not gonna go into detail of every one. That would take forever, but we can at least skim through uh, what we have here. These are all RTX 5000 series GPUs. We've got a 5070 gaming OC with 12 gigs of G7 memory. We have another 5070. This is the, uh, the Master, Aorus Master 12G. And we have the 5070 Eagle OC Ice SFF 12G. It's a two slot card or 2.5 slot card. So I would imagine that this is uh, SFF ready. Oh yeah, it says it right there. SFF ready, certified by NVIDIA, as well as the 5080. They have a 5080 Aero OC SFF, also SFF ready. And I like the fact that they're white. Gigabyte, Gigabyte need, has been needing to do more white GPUs, especially in the high end. So uh, this is actually really nice to see. We have water-cooled 5000 series cards, specifically 5090s. This is a uh, 5090 Extreme Water Force WB, not Warner Brothers, uh, water block, uh, 32 gigs. And then we have the 5090 Extreme Water Force 32G with a 360 millimeter radiator attached to it. It's hard to tell on camera, but this is a, a massive water block. It's so heavy. It is extremely heavy, very sleek looking. And then over here we have uh, the RTX 5080 Master 16G. This is, um, if, you were, if you were worried that the Founders Edition cards were a little too small for your massive case, then look no further than this. This is uh, absolutely massive. This looks like a three and a half, three and a half to four slot card. They should really have a larger, more secure stand for a GPU this size. This is, it's like balancing it on a toothpick. And then over here we have the 5090 Master. Pretty much the same exact card except a 5090. Same cooler rather, triple fan design. Huge aluminum fin stack, fins for days. And then over here we have a 5090 Gaming OC. I can't actually take this off so I can't see what the back looks like but uh, it does appear that the trend with a lot of these 5000 series cards is the flow through heat sink. You can see that there's um, more or less a, a big chunk of backplate that's missing so that air can 
pass through the heatsink openly and come out the other side of the GPU. We're seeing that uh, not just from Gigabyte, but from uh, other board partners as well. Here we have the RTX 5080 WinForce SFF 16G, as you'd expect. Also, small form factor ready, pass through design on the heatsink, triple fan cooling. Finally, we have the 5070 Eagle OC SFF 12G. Here's a quick look around. Let me know what your favorite one is. If you, if you could only choose one, what would it be? And thus concludes my coverage of Gigabyte here at CES 2025. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more content coming from the event very soon, and I will see you guys in the next video.